do you regret mutilating the brownies? No, hell no. That's funny. So I bet so that's the last time she left cracked eggs on the counter. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> Everybody go. Everybody go. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> hey! What day is it? Is today Tuesday or Wednesday? <laughs> this is my gloss lip gloss that I got when I did some um, campaign stuff for Sephora earlier this year. And this is like my first time really taking it out the box um, to use. Don't tell them I said that. But I actually like this one because I was afraid it had a little pink hint to it. And I was like, this may come out a little too, a little too pussy for me, you know. But I actually like it. Mm. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me get serious. Today, we have the distinct honor and pleasure to speak to Anne, Anna Banana, from Cycle 3 of America's Next Top Model. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you guys something, let me tell you something. I did not think that this was going to take place. One, I'll be very honest, like many other people in the world, looking at Anne on Cycle 3, she was not our favorite person to watch. We were like, DM Anne, why you got to be so mean to everybody? That was one. And then two, Miss Ann is like a big time model now. So I was like, she might not even want to talk about this. But the fact that she told me yes, and she wants to talk about the things of the things with the Oliver Twist makes me so freaking excited and happy. So without further ado, I guess I'll just bring her on. Is my lip gloss okay, y'all? Is my hair okay? <laughs> I'm like the light sucks. No, it's okay. How are you? Hi. You, you are. You know I haven't you... said shit about Top Model in like 15 years, so we're and gonna get to it. Came out of hiding for me it makes me feel so much more special. Wait, this light is awful. Woo! Oh, there we go. I want y'all to see my Christmas tree. Let me see him. My Christmas tree? Yes. It's Sesame Street, because I have kids. I have three kids. Look at you, Anne. How are you? I'm OK. I'm very excited about this. Me too. So listen, so I think I would not be doing myself and the fans out there, and you as well adjust this without laying the basics out on the line before we even begin this cycle three chat. Are Let's. you ready for it? I am ready. OK. Do you understand that on your cycle, you are not one of the most liked people? <laughs> I heard you say that, and I was like, yeah, I guess, yeah, uh huh Okay, okay. And then a sub thing to that is, do you potentially understand the reasons why? Oh, yeah, of course, uh-huh. Okay, dope. And then the second thing is, do you, do you understand that the common opinion out there is that Anne should have gone home a long oh, time oh ago? Oh, my God, yeah, I, I'm a horrible model. I'm a horrible person. Everyone needs to know about Eva. I was so mean to her. We're going to talk it through. So yeah, I get it. We on the same page. OK, great. I just wanted to make sure we had that understanding. I just wanted to make sure just so the people don't think the things are the things. Because no, 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 no. Yes, of course. I'm here. I'm going to take this with me. I have it on a tripod so I can be hands free. But my dog is barking. So we're going to go. We're going to walk through my house. Yes, show us that square footage. Ooh, no, I have a little, I have an old house. It's like Victorian. We have snow oh here. Are you in, where are you in LA? Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, with Eva. Is Eva going to pop up? <laughs> where is she? <laughs> 
Okay, can I tell a quick, my quick evil story? It's not like a bad story. So I used to intern for this guy by the name of George 2.0, who um, went to Morehouse College. I graduated from Morehouse okay. College. And he's best friends with Eva's current husband. Um, okay. And so I was like, hey, can you reach out to them and see if I can do an interview with her? You know, I never got a call. Maybe she was just busy, you know? Yeah, so, like, I think it's kind of telling of, like, who the one is. Because I'm like, I'm here talking to you. And we're going to get to it. But there's no beef. Like, everyone thinks there's all this beef. There's no beef. That's good, because chicken is better. <laughs> okay, are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay, so I've pulled all these questions from my comment section on my YouTube. So Please, if you don't like I cannot the, wait. What'd you say? I can't wait. So if you don't like the question, be mad at them. Don't be mad at me. I will. I'll answer. I'm like so super open. Yay. Okay. And then after this, we're going to get to these really fast. Um, everybody, there, there'll be a live Q&A with Anne where you can ask her question. You can ask her question right here. All you have to do is just cop a badge. Um, I'll probably type it somewhere throughout this chat so you guys can see, but just cop a badge for the Q&A um, because we're here to say the things of the things on today. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right. As Lansnam is asking, how was the actual bar fight which involved Tiffany from Cycle 4? That wasn't on our... Oh, yes, that was... I wasn't there. Amanda what said... What the hell? I, that happened, I think, when we were still... Like, this is 15 years ago, y'all. I'm pretty sure that that happens when we were, because she, I think, was on our cycle. I think she was in the next one, but I think she was on the finalists for our cycle. Mm -hmm. So that happened. I wasn't there because they split us. So we just heard it through the grapevine that, like, she threw a bottle and the thing. But I like Tiffany. She's good people. She what, what did you think when you saw her at the following cycle with that whole viral moment with Mother Tyra? Do you know that I've never, so this is so bad. I never really watched it after my season. Mm. I don't know. I still haven't, and I have never rewatched my season. So wait, so when she, with the mama Tyra? <laughs> this is I vaguely, is that what it was? What was? It was the viral moment when she was like, we're rooting for you. We were all rooting. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who recently showed me that? Jay Manuel recently <laughs> showed me that. I hadn't seen it, but... I mean, I get it. Listen, Tyra provided us, you know, with an opportunity. And it was, you know. I would have never done any of this. I would have never modeled had she not, like, given me that opportunity. From my little small-ass town in Erie, Pennsylvania, I would have never been, like, seen by anyone. So, in a way, I totally get it. You know, I don't really re remember the whole thing, how it went down. So, I can't comment. I can't talk shit. That's fair. So Alex wants to know, hi, Anna Banana. I'm so curious about how you feel. People address the scene where you and Eva have your first fight over her picking a bed mm -hmm. in her room. I'd love to know if you've watched that back and now and, and know how the scene made you feel. Um, so I, I don't even, I, I remember. So here's some, like, dish. Eva and I met on the plane from L.A. Or from, sorry, from Atlanta to L.A., before we ever were on like the finalists like the 60s so there were four of us on a plane and we all figured out that we were going to the same place so she and i actually connected before you really saw us on tv and just totally vibed from then so a lot of this stuff everyone was like god it looks fucking crazy she's like obsessed with her maybe she's a lesbian maybe she wants to like <laughs> be with her she like loves her and it's like no we actually had a really good connection and so I felt like a little bit that Miss Eva was like all for like friendship, but then it was like every man for her herself, you know what I mean? And so when that stuff happened, I was like, well, what do you mean? We're not sharing a room. I looked like a total crazy, like stalker person that was like, what do you mean? We're not going to be friends and we're not going to share a room together. But like, it was just like, whatever. Yeah. I think it's like we were close and I thought we would, you know, I assumed that we would share a room. So I don't know. I look back, like, listen, I cringe watching, like, the entire, uh -huh. <laughs> the entire thing. Uh, now I'm like, oh, my gosh, what was I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So D. Leo is asking, I'm jumping ahead a couple episodes. What was your reaction when that girl, Jennifer, pushed you in the hallway? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so 
listen, I was a, like a big water polo player. I don't fuck around. And she was getting all like sassy, you know, and I was just like, don't fucking touch me. You know what I mean? Like I was an all American water polo player. So, you know, whatever, listen, we were living 14 girls in a house. We couldn't smoke cigarettes. We couldn't have boys over. We couldn't do nothing. And it was like, you get pent up, you know? That's the thing people don't realize with like reality TV is that like they can totally, it's not fake, but like they can totally control the circumstances by controlling the environment. So like, you know, yeah, I got my period a couple times while we were on the show and I was probably like a raging like crazy woman. But like we were trapped. We Our house was like in the Waldorf Astoria in New York on like a, like in a floor. I don't even know if I'm supposed to, but, but like, we couldn't even open a window. Oh my God. That's so then it changed. Like when they went to LA, those girls, I was like, you guys have to go outside. Like I couldn't even smoke a cigarette. Like <laughs> we'd be in the bathroom. And then like the only place they couldn't follow us was the bathroom. It was, it was tough. So like a lot of these situations that everyone sees, it's just like women being women. Like there's no, be I love Jennifer. Like she actually is one of my, one of the girls I've stayed in touch with over the years. And like, you know, you don't have beef. We're all just like cooped up and like, you know, drama. Drama. You know, I don't know. I just think about, you know, you just said something very interesting. You know, you're cooped up and you have no outside stimulation, especially from one of affection. And, you know, I probably would do. I mean, a girl's got to eat. You know what I mean? Ah! <laughs> okay. Focus, Eddie, focus. All right. <sighs> Chris, Chris is asking, looking back, do you think you were too codependent on either? No, they made it look that way. They made it look that way. We had a really cool relationship. People don't. It's the same thing. Like, there's storyline editors. Like, that was the story. Like, yeah, we definitely, like, connected and, like, had this thing and, like, Maybe I was more into it than her, but like, certainly like, I'm not like a stalker. I'm not like, I was like, Hey, can, can we be friends? Like, you know, I'm cool. Like, mm -hmm. so it just became this thing where I think that like, just perhaps the way she was and the way I was, it kind of looked that I was like a little bit crazy. Y'all are like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> that is fun. Okay. But so yeah, I mean, it was a little bit, you know, but that's girls you know you get that again it's the same thing like living together you're like okay well we're all like doing the same shit and you know we would play pranks in the house together right Can someone asked me about brownie gate because that's like the best well it's coming up it's coming up and don't, you just and you sit back and relax i got you girl <laughs> i love it yes I brownie gate and then we did some other shit i have some good stories Ooh. Okay. Okay. So okay. So let's finish talking about Eva because Anthony Clayton wants to know what happened to you and Eva's friendship after the show. Okay. So can I clarify something about yeah. Eva? Why I didn't hug her, or do you want to ask that later? Um. Go ahead. We can go ahead and, and we can just do it now. So somewhere in like when we were in Japan, <laughs> and we got down to like you know however many of us six of us I think went, and we're all there. And Narelle is one of my, she's like my girl. She's my best, one of my best friends. I talk to her every single day, still. Still, okay. Yeah, so me, Narelle, and Eva called ourselves Pink Positive. Like, we were, like, together. Like, we were it. And so, as it started getting down when there was five of us left, mm -hmm. Eva says to me, I hope Narelle goes home this week. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> Like, I don't mean girl. I'm like, she's like, I, you know, I wouldn't have pretended like if I didn't connect with Eva or connect with Narelle, we wouldn't have been like friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that's the reason I didn't hug her. It's not like some, we didn't have some like love affair, like lovers, quarrel, whatever all the people on the internet say. It was just like, I didn't look at her. Like, I was like, I don't value that as a person. Like, you know, that you want to, you know, whatever. Think those are inside thoughts. Like you want Narelle to go home. You think that inside your head. Mm hmm but, you know, don't say that out loud because I felt like I had made friendships with these girls that, like, would last a lifetime, you know, and then have, minus Eva. We'll get to that. But there's no beef. But that's why I didn't hug her goodbye. So I forget what you just asked me about. 
but I just wanted to clear like the Eva piece is like it's just it was just like you know I was like that's not cool no and I can I can agree with you and your views and opinions on why my original question was what happened to you guys' friendship after the show because remember so she wrote her. me a letter oh like, okay so okay. after I got eliminated she had wrote written me a letter in my like suitcase that I probably have somewhere I should have gotten it for you no I'm kidding <laughs> And it was just like she was hurt and whatever. But then, like, you know, the show goes, we, we film it, we go home, you go back to your lives. Are you okay over there? Yes. Ooh, okay. wait, hold on. I was trying to, I was trying to sleep, sneak, sneak, do something, and it almost came crashing down. Oh, I know. Okay. So we just went home, and, you know, it wasn't like, I think she didn't want to be friends after that. I think she was hurt by that. And, you know, but it's not like, there's not like ill feelings towards each other mm -hmm. over the years. Like I've talked to her a few times. It's not like, you know, if I saw her, I'm sure we would both be like, you know, excited to see one another. No, I genuinely feel like we had a friendship and it's just now she's got kids and she's doing her thing. You know, Eva always, I never really wanted to be like famous. I didn't really want to like be in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wanted to, like, make money and look good, but, like, I didn't need to be, like, and Eva was always into that, you know? She wanted that. Um, so I think it's just our lives have kind of gone in two different directions. So we don't really, a couple times they've had, like, production people from Top Model have been, like, Eva wants to call you. I'm, like, yeah, she, she can call me. Just call me up. Uh, you know, I've tried reaching out a couple times, but just, you know, haven't connected, so... But well, I don't think it's like beef. What? Maybe she'll call you after this. Maybe. Maybe she's watching. Oh. Hey, girl. Yeah, okay. she's got kids. Like, you know, whatever. I wish her well in her life. Ditto. Okay. You know? Life's short. Too short. Too freaking short. Okay. So, Aramy R wants to know, do you feel like Tyra and Mr. J slash production picked your best photos? No! Fuck no! <laughs> Talk about it, Ann. Listen, I'm attractive and I shoot all the time. And there, you know, your pictures, you're like, who the hell is that bitch? Like, she's ugly. <laughs> it just, it's, it's like inevitable. You take 500 frames, there's going to be 480 of them that suck. And so I do, I think they picked ugly ass pictures of me. I'm sorry. Come on, the trampoline photo. I'm like, that was the best one. Yeah. Come yeah, on now. Adam. No, no, they, they did you very bad. But it was, it's fine. Like, it is what it is. Like, pr pretty quickly into, like, that, I realized, like, I didn't really want to win. Because, like, there was. There was starting to become this, like, stigma surrounding top model. And as much as it helped me, like, get to New York and have this career, if I'm being brutally honest, it's why I go by Annalena Marks. Because when I moved to New York... No, everyone wanted to talk about Top Model. Everyone wanted to say, oh my God, you were on Top Model and what was this and what was that? And then no one would book me. And I was like, this cannot, I gotta go get my dog. We're gonna go get my dog yeah. right now. She's barking, she, but so pretty early on, it was like, oh, look, mine all got all like messed up. Hold on one second, my doggy. She's, a, she's old. So I just feel like, no, they never picked. I mean, no, please. I watched Jay d did something, I think one of his talks. He's still one of my closest friends, Jay. Yes, we found that out when he, when he did his talk. That he has a really good friend. He is one of my favorite people. I remember the camera stopped rolling, and I was like, who is this dude? He was so nice to me. And it wasn't like, listen, I mean, they have to make it. I don't think it's it's fake but like they want to make it entertaining as well you know people forget that and it's not like it's not like they told us like what to say you know but 
let me so let me ask you this. I, ha I have two questions about that. Thank you for bringing up Mr. J. And that wasn't that we found out when he started doing his J test that you and him had a relationship. Well, after the show, which is like, oh my god, that's so amazing. So, did you ever ask him like, hey, J. Now that we're cool and we're good, we're good squirrel friends. Were you guys purposely picking bad photos of me to terrorize me? No, but I think I heard him say that he would turn in his selects and then they often would not show up in any like you know he was there to art direct and then it was like he would be like here are the four best shots and then there would be like a stray but i think that was above i don't think that was tyra i don't think that was i think it was above you know above that so they weren't like controlling it but yeah i mean they have to make it entertaining and they have to it's a lot i mean they were filming they film like almost when you're awake, you're they're filming. You would wake up and there'd be a camera in your face and you're like, ugh. Okay. So but no, I didn't. I'm not like that. Like, listen, I I look at the opportunity I had on that on top model for whatever it was, and it it gave me a career and it doesn't really matter. Like I've been I've worked in this business since then and supported myself. Um and that's like a pretty incredible thing from going from like not ever thinking that I would do that. And I, it, I would have never had that opportunity without, you know, top model. So I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I would never like diss the show. There are a lot of girls that are like, you know, resentful of it. Yeah. You're like, chill girl. Like, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm a little pissed. I don't make residual money off of all the, <laughs> off of all them playing it. But like, it is what it is and that you know I worked hard and one thing that like Tyra never like she's not gonna she worked for her own career you know and she helped us like I can tell you one thing about Tyra if I emailed her right now she would email me back and she's always been supportive of me always like answered questions but she's not gonna do it for me you know I had to go out and do do the do it myself so mm -hmm. mm. that was really good thanks yeah. That was nice, Ann. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm not a bitch. I mean, I can be a total bitch, but I'm not really. I mean, you know, I'm probably one of the few people who watch TV and just understand that this person may not really be this person. And this is just. A yeah, I was 20. Like, yeah. I was I'm 27. Oh. Don't tell anyone, but like. I won't. Mm hmm. So I feel like, you know. It's you're young and, and and at the time too you like don't understand you know I mean I was wearing Crocs on Top Model I wore <laughs> Crocs okay just chill chill I was like these are fashionable <laughs> <laughs> that is funny okay so John Ceceres wants to know ask her about the judges feedback and Kelly as well since they since they were both picked apart. Which bottom two did she think that her time was up, yet they kept her all the way to the top four? So you, okay, let's break it, let's break it down. You and Kelly were, like, dragged by the judges the entire season. What are your thoughts on how the judges talked to Kelly and critiqued Kelly? I thought Kelly was, like, stunning. I just thought that they would, like, you know, it's like they, but again, like, they picked it based on, like, I think on a storyline, like, they wanted it to be this, like, I really genuinely believe it was supposed to come down to me and Eva. I don't know why it changed, but it did. And like, that's it. Like maybe it's viewership or whatever. Like there's so many other things, but you know, I don't know. Like, I think that they probably saw potential in us and wanted to like encourage us to like try harder or like it just made, I mean, I have a different like opinion on it. I don't think like, if I don't believe that any of it's like, Re like that was not my best shot so then I'm like well you're critiquing a shitty photo of me <laughs> like and you should because I look terrible in that trampoline photo or like on roller skates or whatever so it just you know I think they were definitely hard on us you know there were times when it was like I mean I definitely thought I was going home based on the photo you know I'm like oh here we go again I'm in the bottom two uh, Anne's going home so Whatever. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't worry about it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if if you answer this, but if you can, why do you think they kept you so long? I mean, there's. I mean, I read the same rumors that you guys read that like Ford, you know, wanted me. 
um without sounding completely egotistical i think i probably was the most like model like in, in height and like traditional model like eva was like stunning but like she's much shorter yaya even was like stunning but she was more like into acting and she's like gone on to like do amazing things with that so it was like from a traditional like amanda was like beautiful but she was also kind of like on the shorter side so like from a traditional model standpoint, like I probably was more realistically like what Ford wanted, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I went to Elite was the, the agency that I went to. So I think that's probably why maybe it was that they mm -hmm. wanted to keep me around, um, you know, for that. And I'm sure Ford had some say in it. Or Yeah, that's who, yeah, Eva went to Ford. I think it was, they probably had some say in it as well, gotcha. you know. Okay. Um, so, Zayanism is asking, what was your reaction when the judges commented on Yaya, um, commented on Yaya about her being too African? <laughs> Fake kente cloth, la 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 la, whatever, she, I, I forget, right? Did she say that or no, Tyra said that? No, I think Yaya said it was, the, it was fake kente cloth. Okay, so I think Yaya is very unique. She's very cultural, she loves, her like heritage she loves like and you know it's like I think she was I mean she was offended she, I mean her respect like she wanted that that some whatever I was like I'm easy I'm like whatever you want to be you that's cool like it's not really you know my thing but um wait because it was Tyra I forget what it was remind me see I'm like I'm like elderly now I forget all this shit well Tyra, well, they, they but, thought she was too like cultural she was too like mm -hmm. yeah, but like whatever like she's ahead of the time she should be she should embrace it you know and yeah. she was she was very smart yaya went to brown actually wasn't at i think that she was one day late to like um when we went to new york after they picked like when they did the top 14 she was one day late because she went to her brown graduation like she's smart as shit like she you know she is so smart so she just, I feel like she knows who she is and she's one of those people that always knew who she was and was never felt like apologetic about it. And I like that. I think that we all need to be more like that. You know, I just happened to be wearing Crocs and not like, you know, something <laughs> that was more. <laughs> <laughs> and you are funny. Okay. <gasps> Let's get into the whole Cassie spill. Oh, fuck the low carb brownies. I'm just gonna let you go. Go ahead, just go. That child, so like, again, but we're living in this house and literally there <laughs> are 14 of us and we're crammed up and we're sharing the same kitchen. And I'm like, listen, you know, didn't your mother teach you how to fucking clean your shit up? <laughs> like, you're gonna leave broken ass eggs on the, the kitchen <laughs> counter? Like, I wanna fucking clean that? Bye, girl, bye, sorry. So I was like, Eva, we wrote clean your, cause I was like this bitch. And then I'm like, they're low carb. Just eat the fucking brownies. Make <laughs> regular brownies, like they're fine. And and she's like, so we're, I'm like, I'm right to clean your shit in this girl's brownies. This chick is, mm -mm. she is literally. <laughs> so we did it. It was so funny. And then I can't remember. I think I lied about it. I'm not really a liar. You did lie. Like, oh. I don't even know what you're talking about. There's cameras, like, everywhere. <laughs> Me? I didn't write that. Eva was on lookout. But we just, like, that was, like, fun shit. That's, like, we wanted to be, like, outside smoking cigarettes, but we were cooped up, so we had to, like, have fun. Because we would film, and people don't realize when we were filming, I mean, I'm sure other people have touched on this, our, like, elimination would be at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. We'd, like, do it and then have to go, and they'd reset... And then we'd, it'd be like four or five in the morning. We'd be up all night. So we would just start getting crazy, like trying to keep, make, we didn't have TV. You don't have magazines because they don't want anything like with the date. So it's like, it was, it was intense. So we just had to like liven it up. And I don't want to like clean your shit, girl, and eat <laughs> some regular brownies. But then I felt bad because I think she admitted, didn't she have an eating disorder? I felt kind of bad. Yes, and and you know what? Now that you're here, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. I know this was 15. You said this, wait, this was 15 years ago? 
15. 15 years ago, so I know you're a changed woman and you're better than that. But since we're here talking about things and things, and you sat your ass right there at that table in an attempt to read that woman, said, well, how about I just go, ty go tell Tyra about your little eating disorder? I said, oh, my. Did I say that? God, yes, Ed. What? Oh, my God, Ed. How can you do that? And Did I? Like, no, you know what? I want to fucking see footage of that. I don't think I would say that. And she, and she, you said it, and then she was like, well, I already told her. Fans down there, tell me. Tell me. I Are you I sure that was me? I said, oh, my gosh. And, and <laughs> what a bitch I was. <laughs> what? I, I mean, that's rude. I would never. I'm so, I'm old enough now. Like, I feel like. <laughs> Here they're going to say, yes, you did. Roll the tape. I'm Cassie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. And I feel bad that you had an eating disorder. But you should still <laughs> get the regular brownies because they taste better. <laughs> okay. No, for real. I feel bad because eating disorders are very serious. I probably, damn, I look like a crazy person. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It was They're very serious, though. I'm being, I'm being dead serious right now. Eating disorders are a real thing. I've never had one, thank God. But like people that suffer from them, but I didn't feel like she she wasn't like emaciated. Like she, I'm not just dis discrediting what her eating disorder was, but like there are people that really suffer from that, so it's not really something to make fun of. So I'm very sorry. I didn't mean it, and I was just being immature. There. <laughs> it's I'm so glad you did that apology, and we do accept all things, but. <laughs> No, what are we not accepting? Listen, say it. Just say no, it. No, you know, I, I'm all for getting a motherfucker up off you. Like, so, you know, to me, to me, you, you can say anything, you know. <laughs> Let's go for it. I know, but we don't want to be like, I like stuff like that, though, like in hindsight, because I like little girls, like, look up to me, like, even still. And, like, I have a daughter now, so, like, my daughter is five. Like, I don't, you don't want to say that stuff. I really don't remember saying that. I just remember watching it like recently when I was getting ready for Kelly and I was just like, oh my, oh. I probably would have fallen out into the ground and evaporated into the sky. I gotta go back. I haven't watched it since then. I'm too embarrassed. Did you I literally do one of these. I'm like, oh my God, this is so bad. Did you and Cassie ever reconcile? Uh, no. <laughs> well. She probably didn't want, no, but you know what? Like. The girls that were in New York or like going for it, those are the girls that I stayed in touch with. Like some of the, like Cassie, Leah, Leah, t was, I lived with Leah and Jennifer. Was it Leah and Jennifer and I lived in a fucking uh, bootleg apartment in Brooklyn. We had like a squirrel in our kitchen. The first, my first apartment in New York. And the three of us lived in an apartment. But then I think the girl, they left. I don't think they were, they stayed to like pursue it um and i went to like milan gotcha so, and then i went to milan <laughs> you are funny you okay um do you regret mutilating the brownies no hell no that's funny i mean in light of like yeah she had an eating disorder like it, i can see why people think i'm a total bitch but like no that's funny you come on life's short you gotta like live it up like that's funny she left Listen, it wasn't like I just did it to be bitchy. She left the kitchen all dirty. So, I bet so that's the last time she left cracked eggs on the counter. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> Zoe Hiscox. What, now, I keep telling y'all about these screen names. Zoe Hiscox is asking, did they actually forget about Nicole at the acting challenge and panel, or was it just staged for TV? Uh, what did they do? You I remember guys finally made it to Japan and it was that um that episode with the Campbell's chicken noodle soup commercial and Tyra Banks was like okay we're going to deliberate and she's like oh wait I'm so sorry we forgot about you Nicole can you come forward oh uh, I'm sure that was like for a fact mm -hmm. didn't she go home yeah she went home yeah what do you remember about traveling from the U.S. to Japan because that they was thought we were prostitutes Ken Mock talked about this so they didn't give us, so part of it was that like, 
They didn't give us anything reality TV. We didn't have an address. We didn't never knew what we were. I mean, I knew I was going to Japan because I had a fucking plane ticket and I'm not a moron. But like, beyond that, we really didn't know anything like where we were going, were we staying in Tokyo. So we all get to customs and look like hookers because we're all six of us separate like girls that are like attractive and we're like yeah we're all going to like the same address so they picked up on it customs so we get detained we thought it was part of the show so <laughs> we're sitting in fucking japanese customs for and we're thinking they're gonna come get us there's probably cameras up there eight hours later and we're like, this is not a joke. They're taking us one by one into the fucking customs. We don't, we have no idea what's going on. We look like total prostitutes, for real. And they ended up, we had to like fly to Guam. They were going to make us go all the way home to the US. They, they let us fly, like Tyra production got involved. And it's their fault. Like, they, I think if they learned their lesson, I'm pretty sure like Ken Mock like the executive producer like spoke out about this that they definitely learned their lesson because i'm like you know you can't have us trying to enter a country like that and then it set production back like three days so apparently i don't know if jay spoke about this but like the campbell soup commercial he like threw that together because we were three days behind their schedule once we finally got into japan so and by the way like all this time like my parents like they didn't even know where i was like so we're like in <laughs> It's insane. They had no clue, but yeah, so that was like, that was pretty intense, you know, being 20 and like, I traveled, but like Norelle, love her. She had never like traveled. So for her, she was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> What's going on right now? I'm like, it's fine. Have a cigarette. We'll be good. <laughs> like... Okay. So of course you've already talked about Norelle. Um, this person is asking Michael Tran is, are you and um, Norelle still friends? Which you did say yes. And did yes. She wedding. Did what? Did she go to your wedding? Norelle didn't. She had just had a baby. So mm -hmm. she had her first baby. And I don't think she was comfortable, like, traveling. Um, she was supposed to come. But then last minute, like, I got married in the winter. I'm getting divorced, by the way. I'm single. What? I'm sorry. I'm looking. I don't need your money. I got my own money. Single, ready to mingle. So, yeah, so she just, like, <laughs> she didn't come. Eva wasn't invited. We'll just answer that one. So, um, so, so, Anne, what, what kind of man do you like? Apparently, I like really dysfunctional ones. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I like tall. Okay. Um, I need, like, a man. Like, I want a man that, like, I don't really care about money. Like, I've never been... But my I mean, important girl, because they got to have their own, so they're not looking at yours. Well, you got to pay your bills. <laughs> I'm like, do you have a job? Do you have a job? That is a prerequisite. No, I just want someone that's, like, passionate about life and, like, has their own shit going on that isn't, like, you know, I've done some really cool shit, but, like, some guys, like, when I date guys that, like, aren't in the business, they're like, oh, my God, you were, like, on TV. And I'm like, no, nah, I mean, it's not, like, that you know mm -hmm. i'm just it's never defined like who i was and um no i just want like tall dark handsome you know well endowed mm. you know what i mean <laughs> robbie m wants to know what are your thoughts on knowing that tyra model in that kimono for in before their photo shoot and then at judge and deliberation tyra says this about in monkey see monkey don't and Anne did a monkey don't Wait, she said what? For the commercial? No, remember on the episode of the kimonos and she was, remember you guys walked in on her doing like a teach and she was like at, at panel, she was like, she did that for you because she wanted to make sure that she, that she did a good job. And, and I do remember her saying something to the effect of, and they put this in quotations, monkey see, monkey don't, and Anne did a monkey don't. No, Anne. Hold on, hold on. My phone's ringing. Can you hear me? Yes. Some dude I'm talking to. I'm like, I'm busy. Oh. Um, but I'm single. I'm <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, 
I don't remember. Isn't this funny? I feel like I have like, like I'm just old and I forget all this stuff. I should have rewatched it. Um, no, I'm good at commercials. That's like my career. I've done a ton of commercials. I felt like that was one of the best ones I did. With the, I don't know. the flip phone? Yeah. Oh, the flip phone. No, yes. yeah, the commercial. No, you're talking about the Oishi. No, I'm talking about when Tyra Banks had on that kimono and you guys walked in and she had the T-Mobile flip phone in her. Oh, that. I was fucking awful. Oh, God. And Monkey Doe. Mm-mm. She like, it's, whatever. It was the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> and where do you live in the, in the world? Please tell me. I must know. I live in Pennsylvania, actually, because my ex-husband, or like hopefully soon to be ex-husband, <laughs> we're not divorced, sign the papers. Um, <laughs> his family lives here. And so when we were in New York, I live like, like only like an hour outside of the city. So it was like, the closest I would, that was as far as I would go. His family is like from Philadelphia. So when we had kids, um, we moved here. It's all good. <laughs> it just didn't work. You know what I mean? He's not watching, is he? Probably. He's blocked, but he's probably stalking it. Oh, oh hey, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Or his oh. sister's probably watching. Hey, Adrian. <laughs> And stop it. Listen, as Lynn Nism is asking, please describe the umeboshi taste. Oh, it tastes, it was awful. You could see, look at, you remember Eva's face? She was like, <laughs> it was like pickled. What, what, even, what, the, what was it? A pickled something? I don't know. It could have been pickled ass. It was like sour. Mm -mm. Okay. So, okay, I'm getting to the end of my questions. Did you watch my, my live that I did with Amanda? No! Amanda from My Cycle? Yes. Was it so good? How is she? Oh, no, she's really well. Um, We were both kind of, like, lit. So it's like, you know, girl, it was all over the place. It was so horrible. I said, I'm never drinking. Is she blind? It's, no, she's not blind. Why? I thought she was blind. Okay. okay, this is how she explains. She says she has, like, a four, four degrees in each eye. Where everyone... Yeah, like it, yeah. So she says she, like... She can see things if she's like further away from it because it comes it comes more into where she can see. Mm -hmm. But oh, she said that you guys. I can't believe I didn't remember to ask you this, and you guys who are watching this are horrible. Why didn't you guys put in the comments for me to ask Anne about the deleted colonic scene? Oh yeah, like I don't know why they deleted that. I love colonics. That was my first one, though. I will tell you. <laughs> I think I shit my pants after. I mean, had you, uh, you, you said you said that was your first colonic? I think it was my, well, I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania. Like, people in Erie don't even know what a colonics is. <laughs> and you said that was your first time and you thoroughly enjoyed it. It was good. Whatever, it clears you out. I used to get them in New York all the time, like, after I lived there. It's good. Have you ever had one? Oh, you should totally get one. It's I a weird, what'd you say? Nothing. Not your thing? <laughs> Nothing. Disregard. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it's not really my thing either, if we're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll get one, but like... <laughs> like, I'll do it, but... You should try it. It's very, it's great. It's great. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. I'm down, I'm a down-ass bitch, so let's just say that, okay? But like, like for like Christmas, Hanukkah, Easter. Whatever. Valentine's Day, the solstice. Special occasions. We'll Best get them. <laughs> Listen, I'm a down-ass bitch. If you're my dude, you're my fucking dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> Matthias, too, wants to know. Are you still friends with Tyra? Uh, yeah, I am. I said, I mean, we don't like talk all the time, but yeah, she's always been super supportive of me. I think she respected me because I wasn't looking for like a further handout. Like she gave me my handout. I was on, she, you know, saw potential in me and gave me the opportunity to like really make a life for myself. And I think she respects me that I did without being like, can you do this? 
can you do this? You know, all, you know, getting her to like, you know, do all, you know, asking for her to help me more. Like I would bring her stuff, like which agency should I go to? Like elite or this one? And she'd be like, girl, go to this, you know what I mean? Or like stuff over the years. So like, she's always been, um, I have mad respect for her. Um, I know people like can hate on Tyra, but like, she's a super successful businesswoman and she didn't get there by being like, you know, polite and kind to everyone. Like, you know, she's a cutthroat businesswoman and look at your face. I mean, it is what it is. She was good to me. So I'm like, you know what I mean? And you know, and that's what, you know, that's what people have to understand. They have to understand one that Tyra Banks is not some deity that is infallible where she could just do no wrong. She is still a human on a human earth. Oh having, yeah. Having human emotions. So mother is subject to not doing everything perfect. And the second thing is everyone has to understand that everyone does not have the same experience. With she's that. like, listen, like, and it's, that's life though. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's life. Like, I mean, there's probably a handful of people in the world that hate me, like the people watching this, you know, and they experience oh, me. I'm the, kidding. Man. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? I said Colin, Cassie, Adrian, just to name a few. <laughs> You know, they probably, I'm just not their cup of tea, but like, whatever, like, so, that's life. Like, you know, I try to be a good person. I try to handle my shit. I try to like, admit when I'm wrong. And like, yeah, Tyra's no different, you know? Everyone's got their shit. And like, I'm sure she showed up differently for, you know, it's like some of the, some of the, honestly, not to be like about race, but a lot of the white girls are like, she didn't fucking help me. And I'm like, I mean, she helped, she helped me. I just wasn't looking, you know, maybe you were too needy or maybe, you know what I mean? Like, you just don't know. Like, so no beef with Tyra. And we have a, t her son, I think is the same, is uh, around the same age as my daughter. So. Play date. Probably not, but like, I don't know. Is she in LA? I don't even know where she is. I don't know where she is. She didn't call I me. can't remember the last time I saw her, but like, we haven't connected you know, in person and in, in probably a while. Cause she was in LA for a while. I think her dude, but then she had the guy she's dating was in New York. I don't know. Who was your I have three kids and I like have my own business now in addition to like. I'm gonna ask you about that cause the girls also wanna know about that too. Okay. Who was your favorite judge? Jay, he wasn't a judge. My fa I love Nole. I love all of them. Janice, Janice was like dope to me. I mean, she was crazy as fuck, but like she, she's got a good heart. They all really have their own way. Nigel was amazing. They were all really good people. And then, you know, they could have their moments, but like I kept in touch with all of them. Nigel, I worked with Nigel. I worked with Nole, like, you know, just over the years and kept in touch. And I haven't talked to a lot of them in a, a, in a while, but like, you know, that's also life. It's been, New York's like, kind of like shut down, you know, no one's really kind of sucks right now, but. Yeah. I went on No Lay Marin's Instagram, like probably like a month ago. And I was like, just, I was like, ooh, No Lay is still out here. Yeah, just... He had an agency, like he did his own like VNY and like, he's always up to something. But they were, I mean, I can say like, if I, I mean, I don't know, I like them all. I can't pick one. What? They all kind of critiqued me the same. And I think they all genuinely like, liked, were rooting for me against the bad pictures that they were picking. <laughs> they were like, we really, we see the potential. I'm like, then pick a better picture. Right. It makes sense. Okay. Was there anything watching that you can remember where you were like, oh my God, it did not happen that way. Why are you guys presenting it to the people as this, this is the fact when in case it's not? I mean, I felt like Eve, the Eva situation was definitely, like, not really. Like, everyone's, like, it's, like, what everyone needs to know. And it definitely wasn't, like, as beef as, like, people want to believe it was. But, like, obviously, it was a better story. Sometimes with that, because people get, like, all hung up. And I'm just, like, it's really not even, not even that deep. Um, i trying to think what else. No... Like the motorcycle, oh my God, when I cried, that was so embarrassing. When Jay was like- I'm ready for you to go home, girl. I'm just gonna be real. I was like, girl, when are they gonna send Anne home? 
Just send that bitch home. Send her home. Why are you not I mean, terrorizing her, terrorizing us? I know, but I really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you Here's know the thing that people forget they film you for 20 like basically let's say you sleep eight hours so they film you for 16 hours a day they could paint you in any if someone followed you around for 16 hours like look at during covid like everyone's been like overly emotional or overly this so you have your days where you're like i just can't i'm over it mm -hmm. and i'm like screaming at my kids or like flipping out on my like and you could be painted in any picture. So I just feel like people forget that. It's like, they really could have, you know, like I said, I got my period. It's like, yeah, like <laughs> when a woman gets her period, there are like, you know, 50 shades of fucking bitchy. And like, <laughs> it is. And at one moment you're crying and the next minute you're this. And like women and hormones and like, it's just like they can kind of paint any picture that they want. So... It's hard. It's hard to say because it's like, I, I, I'm not like bummed at how I was represented. I obviously knew that like, I wasn't like a bad model or I wasn't like, you know, I don't know. Definitely when we ran up the stairs for that challenge and Yaya won, that was a total, to me, I'm like, you just try, they tried to like, that's the shit that I felt like they would do to try and get us to react because I'm an all American athlete. And I guarantee you, I fucking ran up those steps faster, but they'd be like, yeah, yeah, one. And then they'd like pan to me and be like, and you're like, I'm not going to cry right now because I know this is bullshit. So, you know what I mean? That's the stuff that people have to like use your brain. Um, I can't believe we've done this whole entire chat without mentioning y'all. I mean, not y'all, yeah, Takara. I know. I love Takara. I don't talk to her as much. Like, She's like doing her thing. She's always been, she's gorgeous. Like love her, send her so much love. Like our season was actually really solid. Like the girls, like the beef, me and Eva, it wasn't even like, it really was just like, I was like, I, I'm not down. Like I'm not a mean girl. Although apparently I was cause I made fun of Cassie. But like, I, it wasn't like, I wasn't really close with Cassie at that point. But like, I'm not a mean girl. Like I would never be like talking behind Eva's back. I'd just say it to her face if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. Okay, listen. We're going to get into some other questions about you post top model. Okay, okay, let me ask you this. Yes. Just logistics. Did you walk in that final runway? No. You didn't. Okay. No, we did top model after dark in Tokyo with Jay Manuel and Miss Jay. And we would go out and like be like, you're gonna make out, just go up to some random, because it was not on camera. We would go out, cause yeah, cause we had to stay. So we'd go out at night, it'd be like top model after dark. <laughs> and what would you guys be doing? We would just fuck around. Jay Man would be like, I'll give you, I'll buy you any fucking handbag you want if you just walk up to the next dude walking down the street, this little Asian man, and just start making out with him. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. We had so much fun though. Because yep. Japan was like, you know, it's like an, uh, uh, the cultural differences, like, and we stuck out like a sore thumb be walking around Tokyo. Um, so we had fun, but no, I didn't walk. I don't know why, though, because I was still there. They didn't call you. That sucks. Whatever. I didn't care. I mean, yeah, you probably didn't. <laughs> I heard. Elizabeth Mullins is asking, as far as questions, as far as questions go, what has she been up to? I think she has a company called Full Feedings. I what did. did she do and what inspired her to start it? Okay, so I had my daughter like five years ago, and I don't know why, but it's sleep, like getting her to sleep just came really naturally to me. And so like I had a night nurse that helped me with her. And she really was like, you need to write a book or you need to just do something. Cause I always just knew, like, I think people probably thought I would have been like a shitty mom, but I'm like a really amazing mom. Like I, I don't like other people's kids. I just like mine, like to hold and touch and stuff. You know, I don't want your kid on me, but I, I just had this knack for like teaching them how to sleep. And I understood it. Like I saw it in a way that was gentle. I didn't want my kids to like cry it out or do anything crazy. So after I have twins as well, my twin sons are two and a half. And I started developing this method kind of like five years ago. And then I really started once I had my twins because, you know, I'm 38. 
um, or 37, sorry, I'll be 38 in April. And like, I still model and I still go in for stuff and I still do acting. But like, it's weird when you have kids. It's like you don't, I don't want to like leave them anymore like that. I don't want to go and shoot something for two weeks or and, and to be honest, as you get older, like, I still look good. I think I look better now than I did. But I'm like, but <laughs> if you touch this hair one more time, let me just do it. But if I do, it's staticky. <laughs> that's why I'm doing it. Look at this. This is the winter here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm touching it. You are just. Um, but I knew I needed to like create something that was a little bit more, like that I could sustain. Mm -hmm. And so I created full feedings, and it is like my full. It's been so great during COVID because there's really nothing like modeling. I've had like a couple things here and there, but like it's really kind of not going to pick up again. I think until you know, there's a vaccine and it's, you know, a little bit. So I like teach parents all day how to get their babies to sleep. And I love it. I'm so passionate about it. And um, yeah, that's what I do. And I have an online program. So I like created this whole like online program to teach them how to do it for people that don't want to do like one-on-one -on -one consulting or, um, you know, I, I'm expensive. So I created an online program that was like super affordable because I think parents like accept that they don't are never going to sleep again. And I, for me, I'm like a raging bitch if I don't sleep. So I was like, I need to get my sleep and get my kids to sleep because it's the best thing for them. And so that's what I do all day. That is so beautiful. And, you know, I just want to say, I think you are very fabulous. I'm just sitting here watching you and, you know, just watching the things of the things. And I think you're just absolutely fabulous. And if they ever have a Real Housewives of Pennsylvania, I don't know what cities they have. Over there. I really hope they would interview you because you are a key. <laughs> I think I need a man to be on the Real Housewives. Or do they have single moms? No, they definitely have single moms, and your storyline could be you trying to find a man that's that's tall, dark, and handsome, and well endowed. You know what I'm saying? Just visit me in the A. I'm pretty sure I can show you some people. I mean, listen, I'll as soon as this fucking shit's over. Have you been like quarantining, kind of? Um, no, I no, I have been. I've actually been okay. quarantining. I had to do something where I was getting, I had to go get tested every week. So, and I've been corona free. Yeah, I mean, we're good, but, like, we're just trying to chill out. It's a little isolating, but I'll come visit in Atlanta. I'll come to Eva's. She'll have me over, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no beef. I swear to God, if we ran into each other on the street, it would be, like, nothing. You're just funny. <laughs> I love her. She's good people. Like, listen, but I'm not, I was never in love with her. People need to stop that garbage. It wasn't like that. I mean, she seems like she's she's cool. You know, I don't have any beef against her. I don't know. No, that. she's totally cool. She just, I think she had different, like, she wanted to be famous. That's what I said. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, she, and she's got a killer personality. She's fucking stunning. Um, you know, and she, she's, you know, I think she's a great person. A Cedar Ramos wants to know, how was your kiss with Ed Westwick in Gossip Girl? I saw oh, it was you, good. I saw you playing an extra role in season two, and you kissed Chuck Bass. I've kissed a lot of, I've, I'm always that girl. I'm like, oh, this again. It's super awkward though. Cause you don't, I'm like me, I go, I'm like, do you want to like, just do this once before <laughs> we like get this out of the way? Warm up. But I used to actually hang out with like some, like I dated some dude that was friends with all them. And like, we used to chill. So, but that was like after Ed and I like made out. And then he was dating Jessica, and it was all, like, kind of weird. I'm like, this is getting awkward. I'm like, it was on TV. But I'm pretty sure he enjoyed it, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Lady 100 wants to know, oh, oh, yeah, was it, what was it like opposite Matthew M M McConaughey, and did he make you, did he make a pass at you? Oh, you mean, there, he, she's talking about um, Patrick Dempsey. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, Matthew McConaughey and, um, the ghost of good girlfriends past. Oh my God. I am like ancient in my life. What? I have three kids. I forget everything. No, none of them did. They all like most of the, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I wouldn't tell you who did, but most of the celebrities were respectful. They are, they are, they're cool. It's a job. Like people forget that. Like 
you do cool shit and then like it's a job it's fun but like you know they go home to their wives i mean they you know i don't know i'm sure they would have but <laughs> <laughs> that was never my thing though ever mm -mm. i was actually the opposite where i was like we're not i'm not having sex with celebrities and you are a key mm. Let's do this again. Are we done? No, we're not done. Okay, so this is the point when I'm going to open it up to everybody. Yeah, let's... no, please. I'll do. I'm like, whatever. My, as long as my phone doesn't die, I'm here. Okay, so listen, guys. So this badge thing is still messed up, but I found it. You guys know I have two phones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pull up the badges on um, this screen on my end, and then I'm going to answer the questions on this end. So my guys... <laughs> Start putting your questions up because now I'm going to read them. Oh, my God. I want to go through all these things of people. Are they saying nice things? Are they being like, she's a bitch? No, what we're about to see now, well, don't go through all of them because. Oh, I won't. I won't. I won't. It'll be too much. That's why I was so happy when they did this bad thing. I'm like, oh, my God. Yes. Now I can ask people. They can send me questions. What they're... is that? I'm like, I live in mom land. I haven't watched TV in like five years. Okay, so Instagram, Instagram needs to pay me because I keep explaining this. So Instagram basically introduced this new feature on their platform, which is called badges for their creators. Okay. And it's like um, their version of Super Chat that YouTube does where people who watch content can support their creators by sending them tip money. So oh, and cool. it's, I started using it because I want to um, include the fans in their questions, but I get anxiety when I'm trying to like talk to you guys as well as like scroll through. So Yeah, that's a lot. Right, so when they started doing the badges, I was like, oh my God, um, it had helped me because when people get a badge, until recently, it would be a badge next to their name. So when I'm asking questions, it's just easy for my eyes to go straight to the badge. Um, but they did something and it's, it's not working anymore. I feel like that happens when they first come out with stuff and then... I'm just like, stop messing with stuff. It was great. Okay. I know. Okay, so let's shout out the people. We have Michael Dot. Avalanche, Nina underscore G, Vanity underscore Prime, Andy, yes, Marquez, JC, oh no, J Cancer 21, M Martin, Amandi, Darwin underscore guest, what's up? I am underscore uh, Tim Eason, so, so Ruger and Randy Milan. Okay, let's get into these things. Let's do it. This static, I'm like, y'all probably think I have a problem, but my hair is so static. <laughs> Um, are you friends or acquaintances with any other girls on your cycle of top models? This is Nina underscore G. You've already told us about Eva and Norell. Are there, and Jennifer, any other girls? Um, pretty much, like, Yaya and I have kept in touch over the years. Like, I feel like COVID, everyone's kind of gone into, like, hibernation, so I haven't really talked to anyone. Amanda, I talk to from, like, time to time. Takara, like, what, once in a while, we'll connect on something. Um, who am I forgetting? Um... I think that's it. Like, Kelly, we're cool. Like, we're everyone's connected, like, you know. Uh-huh. But really, the top, like, six of us were really, gotcha. you know, close. Okay. So someone wants to know, what do you think about your um, makeover? Did you like Oh, my God. It was awful. You know what they fucking did? She was, you know what they were going to do? They are going to shave. Because I have a small forehead. What? Oh, could you hear me? They were going to shave my forehead. So after, like, I think Jay told me that. Or, so, like, Ty, somebody said, instead of putting blonde, because I think the thought was that it would open, like, I have a really small forehead. I'm like, I would have fucking had, a, like, a stroke if you shaved the front of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it was awful. And the, it was, like, such an in-between length of hair. I'm like, you know what? You should have given, this is why I'm like, this shit's rigged. If you would have given me long ass, beautiful, like if I had Amanda's hair, but brunette, like, come on, fucking get the fuck out of here. You know? Get out of here. Okay, Nina underscore G wants to know, and talk about that tarantula shoe. Oh, that was, I was fine. That Eva was fucking, oh, she, she was not, she was not happy with that. That was, that. that's mind over matter. The thing moves, like, it's so slow. I know, but they, they move so slow and they're not poisonous. Like, they, they weren't going to do anything to us. They don't even bite. 
I probably would have got sent home because I would have been freaking out. Eva was fucking losing. We were dying laughing. Did you get asked back for All Stars? Yes. Why did you do it? Because it wasn't worth it. I told you when I moved to New York, it's why I use Annalena Marks because everyone wanted to, like, okay, so I'll give you an example. I booked Olay. I've done Olay, right? So I did a lot of hair, a lot of beauty, and it's like a shit ton of money. And you're like, I remember getting into a cab. I booked Olay. I was up against like however many chicks. I book it. And then all of a sudden I'm getting into a cab and someone's like, Anne? Anne? And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Because the thing was, when I moved to New York, they were starting to use like reality people for endorsements. And the thing was, is I'm like, I was like super popular on it, I felt like, but not enough. Like, I felt like companies like Procter & Gamble would be like, Oh, they wouldn't want someone thinking, oh, that's all you got was like some D-list fucking chick from America's Next Top Model. So it became this thing in the modeling business that I didn't want to be associated with that because it looked like these companies. I was well known enough that people knew, like would recognize me and then comment on it. But then companies, it wasn't enough that people would like buy the products. It was almost like, like Jersey Shore people, like, you know, caulking like you know Clairol or something like that's not gonna sell like you right. know so it, it became this really weird thing like that my agents were very aware of and that we just I decided to like distance myself a little bit from it which is why I haven't publicly spoken about it in 15 years mm -hmm. um because it just I felt like it actually caught I would be like leave job casting they'd be like we're going to book, like, I was like, I booked that. And then I, they, they wouldn't book me. And so I was like, I just need to, whatever. So. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. I, I underscore, underscore Tim Eason said, <laughs> said, I was cast to meet Anne on Tyra Banks back in 2004. Producer Mike Caradang set it up. She's single now. Can we hook up? <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? Let me talk and go on his page. Let's see. He was gonna go. Someone was trying to set me up. One of the that, producers. That's Who what he's trying to set us up. Let me go to his page. Let's see what he looks like, girl. How old is he? That's I another thing. I don't like puppies. You can send it to me. You send it to me. <laughs> Okay, Tim, you heard it. Just DM her, you know, DM her, handle your business. Just slide into my DMs, Tim, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Handle your business. Do, do, what, <laughs> do, what's, do what must be done. Do you have a job, Tim? Oh, yes. That's a, I mean, he, does, he, he looks employed. He does look employed. Okay. But Gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. uh, she already talks about the baby thing, guys. Were you able to use any of your photos from Top Model in your book? I bet. Please. What next? Next question. I'm kidding. They're just too like the modeling business isn't like that. So like the shoots are so fun. I've definitely had shoots like real jobs that were like I did a Fiat commercial where they literally transformed like Winston Salem to like mm -hmm. the entire thing was transformed like you know and it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But like it it's so like not like top model like the real the real modeling business. Um, so I'm looking at the comments. Oh, yeah, please. And you are beautiful, and you've done a great job. Thank you. I'm just gonna read this is me, this is my life. Merry Christmas, hungry caterpillar. <laughs> um, I've, I've seen these questions a bunch, a bunch going through the chat. What are your thoughts on Yolanda? Yolanda isn't ringing a bell in my, isn't ringing a bell in my brain right now. Yolanda she won the first cycle. Where what is she doing? Yolanda? Yeah, Yolanda House. Yolanda. Who? Yolanda. Who who are we talking about? Who the fuck's little Yolanda? Well, some people keep asking about Yolanda. I don't know who the hell Yolanda is. I thought you knew. Who the fuck's the Yolanda? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going back to the hungry caterpillar. And you should know that the second the second winner is Yolanda House. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> she was not the second. Yes, she was the second. Okay, so who was the second winner then? Adrian. No, Adrian was the first. 
I told you I never watched it. I saw one episode and I was like, I'm gonna say, doesn't anyone want to know what my audition tape was? Tell us about, okay, well, before you tell us about the audition tape, the people are talking, they're saying Yol Yolanda Hadid. She don't know, Yolanda Hadid, G Gigi Hadid's like somebody? I guess so, girl, I don't know. I feel, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, they say Yolanda Hadid. What are they asking about her? What I think of her? They just were like, what are your thoughts on her? I don't know. Is that Gigi Hadid's mom? I don't know. I don't know, Gigi. She has to call me and text me. I don't know. Next. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't think that's her mom, though. The mom is the, is, oh, maybe it is. It's not Hadid, though. They said you guys were neighbors in, in, in Newtown. Oh, she lives here? Yeah. Oh, she's a farm here. Mm-hmm. I don't know her, though. Does she oh, know me? I don't, I don't, I don't, I clearly don't know. I mean, I'll go to the horse farm. Yeah, I think I heard that, that she, that, that, um, that, that she has a house here. Look at me. I, like, live under a rock all day. And if they ever have any reality, and you must be casted. You I know, are. but I need like $18 million for mm -hmm. it because we didn't get paid shit. Oh, yeah. Okay, tell us about tell us about your, your audition tape. Oh. So I was like, I'm not telling anyone I'm doing this because I was an athlete. I was in college. And so I did a video of me dancing to Michael Jackson, black or white, in my bedroom. I cannot find the tape. I am... 100% certain that Tyra has it somewhere <laughs> in the archives. And it was just me like dancing in my bedroom, like getting down. And they were like, we want her because she's fucking crazy. <laughs> that was it. I forget what we had to like talk about, but I've, I've wanted to like find that tape because I set it up myself and it was in one of those old, it was like the VHS. This is, I feel like I'm so old. But it was like the little mini recording tape mm -hmm. inside the big VHS tape that went in. And I sent the whole thing. I'm like, I'm not even telling my mom I'm sending this shit. She's going to be so mad at me. And then they called me like a couple weeks later. And I still didn't really tell anyone until I knew that I was like a top finalist. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and I'm not going to ask you any more questions. I think you've done a great job. Thank you to everyone who participated in the badge thingy. I'm going to find out a better way to like do this because they're they're glitching something and it's making my anxiety go up just trying to read these questions. But we did a good job today. We, we did. And and you get now. Listen, I did not know how this was going how this was going to go. Why? I, I mean, because I just don't know. I mean, you know, I I don't think there. You, you know, I do try to scroll down you girls' pages just to see, you know, how you guys talk. If we're fucking crazy, but oh, we're not. But I haven't been posting because Full Feedings is so busy. And I actually decided that, like, while COVID's going on, I'm like, I'm not putting energy into that because I, you know, am, like, my business is just, like, booming. And I'm, you know, so I'm over there. Go follow me over at Full Feedings. And I will. Full Feedings. But I'm, I need to start. I get a little tired. I, like, I'm a single mom. So, like, during COVID, I had no help with my kids. And then my ex does take the kids. So that does help. Like, they're there right now. Um, but so that helps. But, like, you know, I just I feel like I don't have enough hours in the day to do all this. And I just work, work for myself. So I don't have I have a nanny. But, like, I try to get all that done. So Annalena Marks was, like, she just took the back seat for a second. But, like, I need to bring her back out, I think. Gotcha. Yes. And Tim is, he said he's going to your DMs right now. Tim sliding into the DMs, baby. Let me scroll down some more and see. Let me see what does he do. Does he have a dog, though? I don't see any dogs. Has he ever been married? I'm trying to see. Do I see? Uh, let me see. I mean, he seems tall. He's in a car. Let me see what car, type of car he drives. <laughs> he looks he look like he does entertainment stuff. Okay. Mm. I just want to know who tried to set us up. That's what I'm more interested in. Who was trying to hoe me out? <laughs> we got to go this thing. Listen, and is there anything else you want to say about cycle three of America's Next Top Model? No, it was the best cycle, and it's still, and I think people still think it was the best cycle, for real. Second best, I would say. What's the first one? Five to six, I'm sorry. 
Why? Well, who is on it? Remind me. Danielle, Jade, Feranda, Joni. Who? Oh, I know Joni. She's from Pittsburgh. She did you do a <laughs> thing with her? <laughs> well, because we would cross like with these girls, but like I don't know them all. Like you would cross, and then like I meet. Then now there's like eight million of us, so it's like it's not even that special. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard, Banks. Right now, what would you say to her? I wish her well. <laughs> I do. I know you guys don't want to hear that, but like. I mean, I know that's good. I do. She's a good, she, you know, I hope she's happy and I hope she's a, like, you know, fulfilled in her life. I am so grateful for you giving me like, I think, guys, I think this is like top three best interviews I have done. And I think, okay, I probably shouldn't say this, but I will. Okay, I'll do top five. You, Shandy. You oh, yeah, Shandy. Yep. What the fuck is Shandy doing? Yeah, oh, girl. Is I'm she not... all tatted? She's got tats everywhere, right? Listen, and I've been collecting you girls like Infinity Stones. I haven't seen her. She was like DJing all fucking crazy in the East Vent Lower East Side. I went to one of her shows. Jesus Christ, I feel like I've lived 18 lives. So wait, Shandy, who else? Joni? Uh, huh? Was Joni good? Oh, yeah, the Joni one was good, too. How was Jay's? Jay's good. Oh, yeah, Jay was good. Jay, yeah, Jay was good. I, I've done so many. But, like, I know there's certain ones that people just love, love, and I do believe this is going to be one that they just love, love. Because oh, good. So then hopefully people will not think that I'm a bitch, except my ex-husband and his family. And with that, <laughs> and with that, guys, let's send in her kisses and positive as we wave goodbye from her giving us an amazing Cycle 3 top model interview. <laughs> let's do it again. We'll do it again soon. I'm afraid now. I'm, I'm going to rewatch and then we'll do one and then I'll really give you all the beef. And I'm going to get the static, I promise. Tim, my hair will not be staticky when we go out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and get off my thing. Bye, girl. Bye, I love you. Love you, too. Oh, my God. That was freaking high hilarious. Listen, I thank you guys so much for joining me every time I do this. This is so freaking cool. I feel like I'm living out my little gay black boy dreams when I get to go live with the girls for my second favorite show of all time. This is so freaking amazing. And she was so funny. As you guys know, this is going to be uploaded on my YouTube channel, Oliver Twix. That's T W I X T. Spell with an X T. And um, with that, I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. That was great, and we did it in less than an hour and thirty. That was so freaking amazing. Listen, guys, be sure to pray in Kegel because no one. Listen, Tim don't want no loose kitty, okay? And I hope Amanda, not Amanda, I hope and and I hope you have the Kegeling girl. I hope you're Kegeling and Kegeling because we out there on the prowl, friend. You single and you gotta let the girls know, even though you are a woman of experience, you can still grip and bite. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Oh, awkward. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!